just stick with the facts a bit more. Right. Are there any further supplementaries? No. I have received a letter from the Honourable Mark Mitchell seeking to debate Understanding Order 389, the decision by the Minister of Immigration to revoke his residency decision in respect of Carol Schrobeck. Uh, this is a particular case of recent occurrence. The Minister's decision was announced at 1.03pm today. Uh, the normal deadline for applications for urgent debate is one hour before the House is due to sit. However, where a matter occurs after the time but before the House sits, uh, the Speaker may allow the application, uh, Standing Order 3891 and Speaker's Ruling 1896 apply. This matter is clearly one that involves ministerial responsibility. The immigration status of Mr Schrobeck has been the matter of considerable parliamentary and public interest. I judge it to be a matter that requires the immediate attention of the House, therefore I have decided to allow the debate to be held today. I call on the Honourable Mark Mitchell to move that the House yeah, take so moved, note of an urgent matter so of public moved. importance. I so move, uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Mark Mitchell. Mr Speaker, thank you very much for granting us uh, this urgent debate. You've highlighted why it's so important to a country that has watched a government over the last two months make a decision that the opposition clearly knew back on the 28th of October when the Sunday Star Times reported for the first time the case of Carol Schrubix and his decision by the Minister to grant him residency. Mr Speaker, we brought to this House on the 28th of October, Madam Speaker, I'm sorry, Madam Speaker, the opposition came to this House after consultation with my colleague, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse, who had been Immigration Minister whilst we were in government, and we asked the Minister about his decision and the, de and, and the decision that he had taken in granting Carol Shrewbeck a pathway to New Zealand residency. We were very direct in those questions and we highlighted the fact that at that point, one day in, we knew that it was the wrong decision. In fact, just about the whole country knew that it was the wrong decision. So, what was, what was the Minister's response to that? What did he do? Did he come back to this House did he come back to this House on the, 20, on the 30th of October? Did he come back into this House on the 30th of October and say that I've gone away, I've had two days to review the case, I've had two days to speak to my officials, I've had two days to go out and use all the resources of government to gather all the information that he needed to recheck and go back and have a look at his decision? Did he do that? He came to this House, and, and, I, and, and I'd ask everyone to go back and actually pull up the Hansard or pull up that, um, the, the, the audio and visual file on that and have a look at what the Minister Shocking. said. Shocking. He came into this House and it looked like he came in with some humility. And he, no. and he said to the House this, he said, I've gone away and I've taken the time to review the file. I've taken the time to review it again. I've taken the time to speak to my officials and I stand by my decision. He said, I stand by my decision. So, Mr Ian Lees Galloway, after the opposition had highlighted what a poor decision you had made around granting a pathway to residency for Mr Carol Schrubeck, you had two full days. You had two full days on notice to go away and seek the information and have a look at that, the information that the opposition were able to get in that same time frame and come back here and tell the House, actually on the face of it, it looks like this could have been a poor decision and I need to review it. You didn't. Oh, sorry, Order. the member didn't. Order. The member, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. The member chose not to do that. He chose to come back to the House. He, well, that's right. The only thing you can call it is arrogance and hubris, that he came back to this House and he stood up and he restated and he stood by his decision. Mr Ian Lees Galloway, you should not be, or the member should not continue as the Minister of Immigration. I can tell you now, the country has lost faith and has lost confidence in you and your decision making. But it gets worse, because what happened when it was brought up and, it was, and, the, and the Prime Minister became aware of it? You would think that the Prime Minister would go back with all her resources of the office and say, I'm, I'm concerned about this decision. On the face of it, it appears to be a very poor decision. You'd think that she would go back as a responsible leader of the country, 
and she'd want to actually have that information before she came to this House. So the leader of the country, I don't know if this has happened anywhere. We should go and check if this has happened in any parliament anywhere in the world. She came back to this House and she stood over there and she said, the country needs to read between the lines. The leader of the country comes into this House and says, the country has to read between the lines. Well, I can tell you right now, the country had already read between the lines, but it gets worse. It gets worse, and this, this bit really surprised me, is we had the Deputy Prime Minister. A Deputy Prime Minister that normally would lead the charge against this sort of decision. He, he would be completely incensed. He'd be completely incensed with a decision like this. New Zealand First, they would never put up with this. The Deputy Prime Minister came to this House and he stood, and what did he say? He said, I've read the file and I stand by the decision. He stands by the decision. We've had the Prime Minister, we've had the Deputy Prime Minister, we've had a Minister all come to this House and all tell the country that this was a good decision. It is, oh, Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker, the reason why, well, Order. you'll get a chance. You'll get a chance, the Right Honourable Winston Peters, to stand and respond and lay out exactly what did happen because this House and the country is actually very interested to hear that. We, we want to hear what the explanation is, don't we? So let me, let me very quickly put on the record, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Speaker, let me very quickly put on the record this guy's history. And when I, when I go through this history, I just want to say, and I'll come to it in a moment, is the Honourable Ian Lees Galloway offered to give me a briefing. He offered to give me a briefing when this process and this investigation was over and he'd reported on it. So I'm looking forward to taking up that offer and I'm looking forward to sitting down and I hope that actually my colleague, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse, who isn't here at the moment but is extremely experienced in making these decisions, Can't is able to... Sorry, Madam Speaker, you're right. Yeah. Is, oh, I can Point of order, the can I say that it is totally inappropriate, no, longer how, no matter how long or how recent a member has been in this House, to refer to the absence of another one? And it's even worse That's when it's one of their colleagues. That's so would you bring the member back to the standing orders? Thank you. But it is also, it is also, I don't need any help. Thank you. I don't, I don't need any help. It, it is also against the order of the House to take a point of order in order to interrupt a speech. I had already called the member to order over that matter. Yes. No, because you were already standing up and looking elsewhere in the House. I call the Honourable Mark Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. It's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting that every single Kiwi this person has gone up in front of, whether it be the juries in the two trials, whether it be the parole board, whether it be um, uh, the, the second judge, Every single Kiwi, every single... Oh, so he's going to come back to the first judge. Poor old Judge Roy Wade. That's what we're going to hear. Every other Kiwi, every other Kiwi that this guy has gone up in front has thought what? They haven't believed him. They haven't believed one cent. They haven't believed one thing that he said, and they've said he's got to go. He doesn't deserve a residency. He shouldn't be in New Zealand. He should be back in the Czech Republic. And, they made, and there was a huge mistake made. And I, I, if I was the Czech Republic, I'd be highly offended, because that is a country that is a part of, it's a NATO country, an OECD country, it's in the part of the EU, it's got world-class policing and justice systems. They acted like they couldn't send someone back because the state was going to hurt or kill them. What a ridiculous, what a ridiculous proposition. Read between the lines, you're absolutely right, Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Let me very quickly, let me very quickly run through exactly what this character's been up to since he arrived in New Zealand. 2003, flees the Czech Republic as a witness to a murder, enters New Zealand with false passport in the name of Jan Antelik, later gains residency and represents his new country as a kickboxer. Both entry to New Zealand and granting of residency were by the former Labour government. And I want to highlight something here. I want to highlight something. The first time this case came in front of a minister for a ministerial decision, was Mr Ian Lees Galloway. Ah. He was the first minister to have a decision and a ministerial decision around the status of Carol Shrubeck. 2009, Shrubeck bought a house for $490,000. $490, 
using mainly cash deposits made into his bank accounts. Together with a mortgage, he funded the mortgage instalments through cash payments. How do you do that? How do you fund a mortgage through cash payments? Were they declared? No, they were. No income was declared on Strubeck's tax return. Read between the lines, that's right. When you consider what he was charged with and what he's currently in jail um, serving a sentence for, that's the importation of Class A drugs and significant quantities of Class A drugs. 2010, arrested with two Hells Angels gang members on aggravated robbery and blackmail charges. Acquitted on all charges, on a technicality. Charges meant an entire family were placed in the witness protection program. Arrest as, arrested as part of Operation Ark, a covert, a, a covert investigation into Stop ecstasy like crime. pills. You haven't heard the end of Operation Ark. You have, sorry, Madam uh, Speaker. We want to know more about Operation Ark because I am completely confused why a minister who says we should trust his judgment made such a blatantly poor decision. Why? Was there lobbying? Was there lobbying going on? I don't know. But, we, but we're going to find out. Make no mistake, we're going to find out. Shrubeck was found guilty of supplying false information to immigration. False information to immigration. I've had two cases this year that were valid cases, good people doing good things for this country, that had their residency declined because they'd made mistakes on their application form. That on its own, that on its own is enough to have cancelled and sent him home if you're going to have a play, level playing field and you're going to be a fair and compassionate government. It's, it's extremely dodgy. 2011, Shrubeck was charged for being a party to the manufacture of Class C controlled drugs. He was convicted, but that conviction was quashed and a retrial never went ahead. You can see a pattern that's starting to emerge here. Yes. An arrest warrant is issued for Shrubeck in 2013 for outstanding criminal proceedings in the Czech Republic. So not only had he decided to uh, become involved in organised crime and, and associate with gang members and import Class A drugs and be involved in aggravated robberies and, and kidnapping people. He had been doing it back in the Czech Republic. If he, we should read between the lines. We are told to read between the lines. So, not only, so I, I, don't, I didn't believe her except for one minute, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, not for one minute that he is in danger at all back in the Czech Republic other than maybe a couple of his own criminal mates that he might have done over. And you know what? Just be a big boy and go back to the Czech Republic and sort that out yourself. But to think that you're going to hide here in New Zealand, it's not going to happen. So, uh, so, uh, so I'm going so to bring us back to the fact that, um, that I was asked in this house, Ian Lees Galloway got, uh, got one of the backbenchers, new backbenchers, to stand in this house in a very smug way, ask him why he hadn't received a letter from me for a briefing. In a smug, arrogant way. He asked why, he asked why haven't I received a brief, why have not I not received an official request? So I sent her official request. It simply said this. It was sent on the 7th of November 2018. Dear Minister, this letter relates to the decision taken by you to grant permanent residency to Carol Strubeck. I believe that the briefing documents provided to you would have clearly shown that you should never have granted a residency pathway to Mr Shrubeck. And I'm very interested, Mr Ian Lees Galloway, to have a look at that file, to actually see why you made that decision. Because I believe that there's going to be everything in that original file to show that you made a shocking decision. I can make myself available for a meeting with you in this case, but must make it very clear it will be an unconstrained meeting, and although I will respect confidentiality regarding specifics and individuals, I reserve the right to be able to speak publicly and indicate after the briefing whether my position has changed at all. I, I was actually I was, I was goaded on, a, uh, on, on the Mike Hosking show by uh, the Minister of Police, the Honourable um, Stuart Nash. He said, hey, Mitchell hasn't sent the letter. And Hosking said, is that true? And I said, well, yeah, it is actually. He said, well, go and send the letter. I said, OK, I'll go and send the letter. So I sent the letter. And I come back, and what do, what do I get? I get, thank you for your letter dated 7th of November, advising you're available to discuss the Carol Strubeck case. I note your intention to speak publicly and indicate after the briefing whether your position has changed at all. As there is an investigation underway into this matter, confidentiality is paramount. It is important not to prejudice the investigation or possible further action as a result I've been advised that given the current status of the investigation, 
it would not be appropriate to provide a briefing at this point. But, 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 it doesn't matter because he said here, however, I would be happy to brief you following the completion of the investigation and related matters in order to preserve the integrity of the investigation as outlined. So, Mr. Mr. Ian Lees Galloway, I am looking forward to coming to your office and having that briefing and having a look at the Will file. Will longer than 45 and, minutes? Well, that's, that's, a, that, that's a very good question. Because fundamentally, let me sum it up this way, Mr. Ian Lees Galloway. This is what the parole board said. When he, and, and he came in front of the parole board just recently in the last few months. This is what they said about his character. His responses were self-exculpatory, evasive, long-winded, and ultimately, in our view, in many respects, manifestly untruthful. When measured against the facts set out in the judge's sentencing notes and other documentation. The fact, the fact, the fact of the matter is this, and the reason why I became involved at the start is that I'm proud to hold the justice portfolio. And in the justice portfolio, your primary consideration and responsibility is public safety. That's the number one, public safety. The decision that you made, Mr Ian Lees Galloway, did not take public safety into account, not once, through the process. I want to see, I want to see where you measured the interests of Kiwis and public safety against the decision that you took to grant residency Order. to not someone me. that... Not me. Sorry, Madam Speaker. The decision that the member took in balancing public safety against the re giving the residency to someone that had been involved in organised crime and criminal ga gang activity, not just in the Czech Republic, he decided to export it to New Zealand as well and, and carry on a lifestyle of organised crime, importation of Class A drugs, Please explain, uh, Mr Ian Lees Galloway. Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In the days following the publication of my decision to cancel Carol